Welcome to the Player Reaction. I'm Corey Draper, and this is your intro to the NFL. Think of this as your cliff notes on what the NFL is all about, so you can land that sports-obsessed client, participate in those awkward break room football conversations, or impress that guy or girl by pretending to be totally into football even though you actually don't care, but they're super hot. In this video, I will give you all the info you need to have a foundational knowledge of the most popular sports league in America. We'll go over basic history, rules, and big dates on the calendar to help you carry a conversation with an actual NFL fan year-round. So, let's get started. NFL stands for National Football League. You may hear friends call it the No Fun League because of its rules against touchdown celebrations or hard hits, or Not For Long, which is reference to the short average career in the league. Three years, by the way. And here's where it all began. The NFL was established in 1920 and began as the APFA, the American Professional Football Association. It only consisted of 14 teams and the league and the game of football. Looked entirely different than it does today. Players wore leather helmets, they ran the ball on every down, and the teams consisted of a bunch of white dudes with dad bods. A lot like Tom Brady in his combine photo, or Chris Pratt before he was Star-Lord, or Val Kilmer after, well, after he just gave up. Only two of the original franchises still exist, the Decatur Staley's, now the Chicago Bears, and the Chicago Cardinals, now the Arizona Cardinals. Fast forward to 1960, when a bunch of disgruntled old rich guys decided to band together. They were denied bids for their own NFL franchise, and in typical millionaire fashion, they decided to just go and start their own league. They called it the American Football League, and after just a few short years, became a big competitor for the NFL. Well, the NFL had no choice. This is America, after all, so when Cap Capitalism does what it does best and cause players' salaries to skyrocket because of so much competition, the two leagues decided to merge into one happy, unopposed football giant. Ah, America. So began what is referred to as the common era of the NFL in 1966 when they announced the merger. While the merger didn't become official until 1970, they went ahead and decided to have the best teams of the two leagues play each other every year in an end-all, be-all championship game. A bowl of sorts that may or may not become super. You know, that bowl. We call it the big game because we're afraid of lawyers. You know. They know. So, now we're all caught up to the NFL as we know it. The league is now broken up into two conferences, the NFC and the AFC. There are 16 teams in each conference. For those of you who black out when math is present, that's 32 teams total. Each of these two conferences are evenly broken up into four divisions, which are named and organized by region, North, South, East, and West. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, not exactly. Some teams are in a division that makes no sense for their location. For instance, the Cowboys play in the NFC East when they play in Dallas, and the Chiefs play in Kansas City but were placed in the AFC West. This has been done to keep old rivalries alive when NFL added expansion teams and had to reorganize divisions. So, you have all these teams that go through a 17-week regular season with only one week off for each team. Most games are on Sundays, Thursdays, Mondays, and sometimes Saturdays late in the season. We then have four rounds of playoffs, all leading to the Super Bowl championship. But football doesn't just end there, no way. Not in this country. Because just weeks after the Super Bowl, you begin the NFL offseason. First you have the NFL free agency period in March, which is when players whose contracts have ended and did not resign with their teams are declared available to the highest bidder. Think of it as if your favorite TV show had a contract with the network, and then the network decided not to renew after the fourth season. And then other networks started calling and offering big money to be able to play that show on their station. It's kind of like when Buffy went to UPN after leaving WB, or when Cougar Town went from ABC to TBS, or when Family Guy was canceled by Fox and picked up by Cartoon Network and then renewed back on Fox when they realized they're terrible at making decisions. I mean, Firefly, really? You're gonna cancel that and then have shows like Celebrity Boxing? Anyway, after free agency, the next big thing is the NFL Draft in late April, early May. This is perhaps the biggest event on the NFL offseason calendar. This is when all NFL teams get to choose the top players from college to join their team. Once those college kids are drafted and signed, they officially become rookies, and the top picks become instant millionaires. It seems like a great idea. 
After the draft, you have rookie camps, mini camps, and organized team activities or OTAs. Basically, these are workout and conditioning programs where we get to have our first look at the new free agents and draft picks. But there are no pads and no hitting, just a lot of jogging and catching. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting. In June, we hit a dark period where there's nothing going on for a few weeks and I weep openly in the fetal position. It's also the time when a lot of players get arrested, however, so there's still no shortage of news. And just when we feel like we can no longer live and consider ending it all, NFL training camps begin in late July. This is when practice ramps up and pads come on. Guys start to separate themselves and win positions. Soon after that, the NFL preseason begins and you start to see poor souls like me glued to a TV just to see that fourth string defensive tackle our team drafted in the seventh round. Pulling for you, Stevie T. The preseason goes on for four or five weeks and then bam, early September hits and the glorious NFL regular season begins and I find joy in life again until my team loses in week one, which inevitably happens. So what about the rules of football? Well, I could stand here and give you the basics of football, but honestly, there are already some great videos that are fun to watch and give you a great foundation. I'll link to my favorite one below from Cub Studios. Be sure to check it out. So there you have it, your intro to the NFL. You now have a foundational knowledge as to what the heck the NFL is all about. My goal is to do videos like this weekly, each one giving you either some history or breaking down some major NFL news as it hits, so you can be up to date and in the know without having to do any research. Think of the play reaction as your TLDR of the NFL. Whether you're not really interested in watching football, or you're thinking about dabbling, or even if you're a hardcore fan, there will be something here for you. So, if you liked this video and you want to see more, be sure to click subscribe as well as that little bell icon next to it so you'll be informed as soon as another one is posted. Also, let me know in the comments what you would like to see me cover in a future video. Thanks for watching.